In this video, we'll be teaching you guys how to play Omen like a ranked demon and give you some tips and tricks to outplay your opponents. What is going on guys, it's Sergeant Frost and today we'll be teaching Omen. Omen is one of those agents that's either used by hardcore Omen mains that can't get enough, regular field players, or people that actually had their actual favorite agent locked, and now they are forced to play Smokes instead. Regardless of which of the three you are, we're here to give you some new insights and things to think about the next time you play him in order to significantly improve your chances of winning. And if you want to significantly improve your chances of winning and ranked overall, make sure to visit us at ProGuides.com, where our Radiant and Immortal level coaches can teach their secrets to their main agents as well as help you master your fundamentals. So make sure to click the link in the description if you're interested, and let's get started. First some basics about his kit. Omen's signature ability is a refreshing smoke. He gets one for free at the start of every round, and he can buy another additional one for 150 credits. Smokes last 15 seconds, and they refresh about every 30 seconds. Just like Astra Smokes, his smokes are hollow so he can play inside of them and have perfect vision, at least from inside of the smoke. On top of that, he can also buy up to two shrouded steps for 100 credits each, which are essentially short-range teleport abilities, which he can use to get out of bad positions, teleport into strong ones, and use creatively to get good timings or angles. Something important to know, using shrouded step makes a very distinct sound so that people close can certainly hear. However, the sound plays from where you TP from and not to, so you can fake TP away while secretly staying in the exact same position. Then his most expensive ability, Paranoia. It costs 300 credits and it's basically just a large projectile that travels through walls and short sights enemies for 2 seconds on hit. You can easily aim it by looking at the minimap, and it's a great ability to blind right side of sight when pushing Haven C for example. For his ultimate, I should mention right away that this isn't the strongest ability in the game, not by any means. So you won't be farming it like you do with some other agents. And stealing an orb from a sage or KO who have really strong ultimates is a big no-no. That being said however, it isn't bad at all either. It costs 7 points, and your ultimate allows you to teleport pretty much anywhere on the map, which is great if you need to quickly rotate or if you want to take a strong position. It's just not a plain teleport though, it also blocks the enemy minimap from being used, and it can be cancelled by both you and your opponents, by you pressing ultimate button again before completing the animation, and by your opponents by shooting you during the ult animation. This allows you to do all sorts of things. You can get behind enemy lines to flank as an execute is happening, you could TP to the other bomb site in a clutch, and you can even go to an empty bomb site if your enemies found the spike. TP on that and then cancel immediately to go back to your original location, just now with the spike, meaning you can plant while leaving your enemies a bit confused as to where the spike went. That's the basics down, so let's go a little more in depth. But before we do, let's have our question of the day. What games do you play outside of Valorant? For me personally, I really love Apex Legends and Warzone recently. They are two of my favorite games that I started playing way before Valorant came out and I still play them to this day. Let us know what your answer is in the comment section down below. The most important part of any controller is of course mastering your smokes. We already have a guide on proper smoke placement for every map, so I won't be going too deep into that. If you're interested, a link will be in the description. But we will be touching on the different ways Omen can interact with his smokes, as well as timing when you won't want to smoke, arguably even more important. First of all, the timings. Omen's smokes don't last too long, only 15 seconds, so nailing the timing is pretty important. Smoke too early and the smokes might be gone as you're still entering the site. Smoke too late and people end up getting awked. It's really an important balance to strike. The key is to pay close attention to the radar before you place your smokes and smoke right before your enemies make contact. It won't show on the scoreboard, but proper smoke timings really help with your executes. It makes sure your teammates don't die needlessly and can even be the difference maker when it comes to rotates. Smokes that land seconds before you actually come out of choke point simply gave away your execute way too early, and it can cause more players to be on site than you might have originally anticipated. The other side of smoke timings is knowing which smoke to throw first. Omen is the only agent that really takes a couple seconds to throw each smoke angle individually, so knowing what to smoke first and what can wait is important. If you're pushing A on Haven for example, smoke Heaven first then spawn. Your teammates on both long and short see Heaven before they see CT, so playing around that is important. To give you another example on C of the same map, well, Garage comes first, then Spawn for the same reasons. But on some maps like Bind B, it's more difficult. Should you smoke Elbow first or Spawn? It kind of depends on your preference and the situation. If your enemies like to alt from Spawn, maybe smoke Spawn first, as Elsher Hookah players can get shut down. But if they don't alt, well, smoking Elbow first might make life a bit easier for your teammates coming out of Garden. And your Hookah players might even be able to kill someone if they do end up swinging Spawn. Basically, it depends, but think about it. We can't really go over every site right now, but if that's something you guys are interested in, make sure to leave a comment down below. TLDR, know what to smoke first and pay attention to the radar to get an idea of the timing. Those are the two things to focus on with smokes. Then another cool thing you can do with omen smokes is one ways. 
One-ways are something I'm sure you're well aware of, but just in case if you aren't, it's basically a smoke that allows you to see your enemies while your enemies can't see you. Vision only goes one way, per se. With Omen, you can throw one-ways down in a lot of places, even in many walls. You do this by using your indicator that shows you where it'll land. If the indicator turns red and shows halfway on a wall, that means it'll also land on the wall and stay there. This allows you to throw down one-ways, for example, on both mains of Ascent. And since you have two smokes and they refresh every 30 seconds, you can smoke a single angle for 45 seconds straight. And although that might not be the best play to do on every round, it certainly can be very annoying on some. Essentially, it forces your enemies to respect your side of the map, or at least expend a lot of utility which ends up freeing up resources for your team to focus on other things, or makes actually taking bomb sites a lot more difficult. Similarly, I won't go over all the best smoke spots here, as there are a lot more to cover, but if you want to follow up video for the very best one-way smokes, make sure to tell us down below. Shadow Step has a couple of good uses. First of all, it can of course be used to just get elevation or a good angle at the start of the round. Basically, just position yourself like a jet or a chamber would. Additionally, you can use it to just get out of some sticky situations. Got pinned in a corner? No worries, you can teleport. But it doesn't have to be a corner either. If you're defending Ascent A and get spotted on Gen, you can TP to Sight Box. If you get spotted behind Yellow on Icebox, you can get back onto Sight, etc. There's a lot of escape options that Shadow Step opens up for you. Another great and underused option is to use it to beat timings. Teleporting is slightly faster than running normally, but much more important than that, you also don't make steps while traveling that fast, other than the TP sound cue, of course. This makes it so that a great way to use the teleport, for example, is to teleport quickly into an area like Haven A Short in order to punish a potential peek from the defenders. By doing this, you don't only avoid getting spotted by anyone long, but you're also on short incredibly fast with barely any noise, meaning you can really throw off your opponents. Another use for Shadow Step is of course to just cross angles that you suspect might be watched. To stay on Haven, well, both A and C long are angles that you can easily teleport across, but there's a lot of angles that are like that. In a similar way, you can TP into a site if you feel your enemies are watching one angle, but you won't be able to TP if you do it a certain way. One way you could do this, for example, is if you're attacking on Fracture and you decide to TP on top of site. If someone is watching it, you're almost certainly dead. But if they're not, you just applied a bunch of pressure to anyone playing below you, as they now have to watch and be aware of a lot more angles. Two other things you can do, which I'm not a big fan of personally, but I feel like you should be aware of anyway, is combining your other utility with your Shadow Step. Some Omen players really like to style on their opponents by combining their paranoia by flashing the enemy followed up by them TPing on an angle, either behind them or perhaps even above them in order to then shoot them from a position that's completely unexpected. Again, I wouldn't recommend it because you can also, you know, just peek normally, and this is much more risky, but it is a thing. And the other thing, well, I feel like is even worse, as you waste quite literally all of your utility at once, but that's using two smokes and two shadow steps in order to TP from smoke to smoke to get into a weird angle. It's easy to counter as an enemy can walk into your smoke and stop you, and even if it works, the rest of your team no longer has smokes. What you can do, however, is fake TP. Pretend you TP out of a corner or even smoke like you're about to TP inside of it, and then TP back to your original location. Oh, and of course, you can also fake the teleporters on bind. Just get your shadow step ready, jump backwards, and while midair, use teleport. That way, your opponents hear it as if it TPs, but you're safe on the other side of the teleporter. Then his paranoia. I mean, there's not a lot to say about it. It's super strong, especially when using it for teammates. The biggest problem I see players run into it with their flash is that they don't pay close enough attention to the radar and end up flashing their teammates. One of the best spots you can use it from is Haven C Cubby. It allows you to flash the right side of sight, and if you time it properly, it has no chance at all of blinding your teammates. As a baseline, use the C Cubby flash in your mind to try and emulate similar flashes on other maps. Two things to note, however, is first of all, the flash is not a blind, but a short sight, so people can play close around corners and not be blind. And secondly, the flash travel speed is affected by player movement as well. If you stand still, it takes about 1.8 seconds from start to finish. If you run 1.5 and then you run backwards 2.5. Therefore, it's usually best if you run forwards. But if you want to give your enemies more time to react or if you want to catch up with the flash yourself, throwing it still or running backwards are options as well. Last up is Ultimate from the Shadows. Again, it's 7 points to activate it. And you don't want to be farming ult points as that means your teammates have less of their most likely more important ultimates. However, it can be used very effectively. One of the best ways you can play around it on an execute is TPing behind close enemy lines in order to disturb the defense, but far enough in order to avoid getting a cancel. Another way to use it, however, is to save it for a clutch situation, so that you can either rescue the spike when the enemy has found it by TPing and canceling, or sometimes even just to rotate away after you've been spotted. The TP on spike strat can be countered, however, not by standing on the spike like many people think, but by crouching on it. If you crouch on the middle exactly, there's zero chance the omen will be able to get it, unless of course he presses F on it. 
So to counter an omen that's nowhere to be found when you have the spike, crouch on it, and be ready to shoot him as soon as he TPs. And if you're the omen in this situation, maybe consider acting quickly enough to the point where your TP is not obvious so it can't be countered, which sometimes means you're not able to get on sight yet before you teleport. At least from my experience, people don't know how to properly counter it like I mentioned above, but once the community starts to learn, it's time to adapt for the omens of the world as well. Well guys, it's gonna have to wrap it up. Thanks so much for watching. This has been your host Sergeant Frost and I'll see you all again in the next one.